All right, everybody, this is John, and welcome to the free video. Uh, at first glance, it may look like, oh my gosh, Amazon's only down $20 after hours. Uh, but of course, Amazon was up a hundred and something dollars earlier and closed at $1,782 after a huge up day. The earnings came out and it was a miss. So we are down almost two times the expected move. Right now set to open about right here, which would be new lows. Um, I am going to put in some low bids here at the uh, tree line here for a little bit of a bounce, but really what they came in and talked about was revenues being a little bit lighter than expected, and that can be the death knell of a stock like that. And of course, if you've got uh, the NASDAQ here, depending on about a handful of stocks, which it is, then when some of those stocks start to falter, it really can have destructive powers on the queues itself. Now, Microsoft kind of came through and said, okay, our earnings were pretty good, and it was able to hold up. Um, Google, on the other hand, also uh, disappointed today. It closed at uh, 11.03. You can see it's trading at 10.60 after hours, so not as big of a drop as Amazon in terms of points and percentages, but still a move down nonetheless. And now, of course, all hopes and dreams are pinned on Apple for next week. If for some reason Apple does well and rallies, then essentially the NASDAQ just doesn't go down as fast. If for some reason Apple's, Apple has a miss, uh, then the NASDAQ implodes, right? So, so a lot of questions on stuff like this too is just how do you trade this stuff? I mean, is there, do you want to be in the thick of the action of what's going on here and trading this every day? And for some people, yes, that's great. And I'll show you some ways that you can use the momentum and things like that just to kind of, you know, nail the long, nail the moves to the upside, nail those fast moves to the downside. But for some people, it's like, you know what? I don't want to work that hard. I just want to do, you know, I just want to, you know, I just want to look at some kind of easier trades and things like that too. Well, keep in mind that in this market, there still are some stocks that are doing just fine. Walmart is a great example of that. So, um, if 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 what you're interested in is something that's like, gosh, I just want some, I just want to trade some stocks that are not in all this crazy mess. There's a specific way to find those, um, which we'll talk about. And then on the other hand, uh, if you really want to dive in and kind of, you know, catch these violent moves, whether it's on a daily chart or you know, even on a like a five-minute chart, where if I could type that in even uh, correctly there, that would be better. Even on a five-minute chart, um, then there's tools for that too, and and that's just really the key thing is just kind of under you know define what you're looking for. Is it catching those ebbs and flows? Is it identifying easier moves? Or really just being in the thick of this kind of stuff and being on the right side um, of it? And then it's like okay, then great, then match the tool with what it is you are trying to do. So. So the next question in all this is, is okay, you've got all these ebbs and flows and things like that going on in the market, right? Uh, but basically, it's just knowing kind of like, okay, so how, what do you focus on? So, you know, there's ebbs and flows, so you, you know, flow and ebb, and then if it's a downtrend, great. You use that as an opportunity to reshort, and then, you know, and that's great. But, you know, what? when do you focus on the ebbs and flows and when do you focus on pure momentum where you just got to dive into that sucker and not worry about getting the perfect entry? So I'll show you, this is just a review. These are all tools you guys are familiar with or if you're not, um, I'll just kind of show you how they work. This will do like two minutes, but I'll show you in this kind of a market. So first of all, we had some, we were talking earlier about um, consumers, right? And hey, Walmart and Procter and & Gamble. So we had a trade in, in uh, Walmart for the last couple of days, we had a squeeze, which you guys know I love, and we came up into the upper profit zones. Okay, so when we get there, that's a great place to take some chips off the table. And then, of course, when we were getting the squeeze, we had the RAF buy. This is still, hands down, my favorite setup when it happens. When this happens is when you get a move, you get some quiet consolidation, we have plenty of time to ease into that. So that's always my first choice. But of course, as you guys have noticed over the last couple of weeks, the market conditions have been very volatile. And if you don't have this nice, clean squeeze set up, how do you trade this stuff and what do you look at? Um, so from here, what I'll do is then come down uh, to the lower left. This is a, my quad screen that I like to look at here. And in the lower left, I can say, okay, at the very least, I want to look at these first two top ones, okay? Now, what these do is allow me, at a glance, to see over the course of 18 time frames, from the monthly chart, you know, to the daily chart, to the one-minute chart, and everything in between, that top one just kind of tells me 
what the relationship between the 5 and 21 EMA is. If the 5 is trading above the 21, then it's green on that time frame. And if the fi if if it's the opposite, then it would be red. You can see on Walmart, it is green. It is, I mean, that is an uptrend. Okay, and anytime you see an uptrend like that, that's that strong. All you do is buy the dip. Okay, and along the same lines is I was talking about the earlier um, where I really love these squeezes. Well, daily squeezes are great when they happen, but sometimes there's squeezes on other time frames. There might be a weekly squeeze. Okay, there's not right now, but on Walmart. The only there are squeezes setting up on the 10 and 15 minute chart as well as these for a day trade. So I like to see at a glance if there are any squeeze opportunities um, to play. All right. Now for shorter term trading, let's go over to this side of the screen and I'll kind of it's a little we'll just focus up here. So if we look over here, these are called Bollinger Band pivots, and I look at multiple time frames here. And again, with Walmart here, what we're looking at is, hey, we're, we're into these upper bands here, that's great. And when we've added to our position, we added on the pullback to the two-hour pivot. One of my favorite trades in an uptrend is to buy any pullback to the rising two-hour pivot, and in a downtrend to short any rallies to the falling two-hour pivot, okay? So that one's great. Now along these lines, I can also look at least on the 30-minute chart and say, okay, how how is the action here okay and if you look at right here the bars here are yellow which means the action on the 30 minute chart right now is neutral it's kind of catching its breath however we can see here that on the last five bars they've been green which means that we have focused momentum to the upside okay focus momentum to the upside now guess what it, we can look at another stock here and I'll show you what focus momentum to the downside looks like well, before we get on that though, let's here let's take a quick look at Tesla. So, you can see here that you've got green bars with dots. So, when you have green bars with dots, that means not only is the momentum um, as positive it's gonna, as it's going to get, but what the dots mean you've, this is happening on 50% above normal volume for this bar and for that time of day, which is huge. Now, you might a lot of times people ask what these arrows are. When I was talking about the normal ebbs and flows, Okay, these arrows essentially are built to mark the odds of when that happens. So we're looking for a new 21 bar high, and then if we break that low of the high bar, we get an arrow, and that shows you that the next ebb down is happening. Now in this case, we tried to get a little bit of an ebb up. It didn't quite work, but these ebb ups, of course, right here said, hey, a bottom is in, let's see if we can ebb higher. And we've gone all the way from $350 to essentially $314 before we got the next sell signal, okay? That's how you stay in one of these more longer term momentum trades. And then I guess what's nice here is with this, you can just say, okay, look, if these are green, it just means that in this case, the 30 minute chart, the 60 minute chart, the 120 minute chart, the, the 240 minute chart, and the daily chart are all trending positive. So if those are all green, you just ride it, just ride it, ride it, ride it, and don't short it, okay? And then of course, you know, if you're shorter term trading here, it's like you can kind of hang on hang on, hang on to the downside. So those are great for momentum like that. And of course, you can see here that they work as well on the downside. So when Netflix gapped up here the other day, um, man, you can see there was volume, but we already got a, there was a high trigger in place. So it's like, okay, now let's wait for the next, we could short it if you wanted to, and then wait for the next green arrow. Okay, you get a green arrow, it's like, okay, well, gosh, this thing has dropped 15 points. That's a good move. So if you get the green arrow, you could go long again if you wanted to, but it's great. Your stop's at the lows, okay? So in this case, that doesn't work. In this case, you make like $15 to the downside. In this case, you know, you lose $3. And it's like, okay, do I want to try the next arrow here? Well, the answer is no, because you got red bars. When you got red bars with volume, guess what this is going? It's going to keep going lower, okay? And then you can see all that there. So, so that really, really helps. Just keep you on the right side of the trade, right side of the market, the path of least resistance. All right, so anyway, hopefully that helps. So for those of you that already have these tools, uh, I just wanted to show you how I use them. Uh, for some of you that are newer and may not have all these tools, um, here's a bundled workspace package if you are interested, and I'll just show you real quick. And there's actually two bundles. So the first bundle, this is the recent class I just did. 
And this has the multi-snap indicator, which is these the Bollinger Bands, which is what I use for ebbs and flows, and then multi-range. It's a little hard to see here, but you can see it'll tell you when it's overbought and oversold on multiple, on multiple time frames, so you can actually time that a little bit better. Uh, the multi-snap by itself is 397, the multi-range is 597, or you can actually get both for 597. So it's kind of a, you know, buy one, get one free if you guys are interested in that. I love these indicators. Um, they actually have been working great in this market, but they work even better in what I would just call normal markets. You can, um, they, they catch the ebbs and flows with precision. And then from there, if you're newer and you don't, you haven't seen those other indicators that I use, or if you want to, if you like them. So this is that bundle I just told you about. Um, but we're doing something here where you can actually get, in addition to those two I just showed you, uh, the 10x bars. That's for the momentum, the top hat indicator. Uh, that's for extreme moves that the al goes short. The squeeze. Ready, aim, fire indicator, profit zones indicator, that multiple time frame indicator, multi EMA, multi squeeze. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, the package of all of my favorite indicators. Uh, it's normally five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars, and you can get them now for twenty-nine ninety-seven, and actually have my workspace and start using it right away. Um, in addition to that, we'll have two days, two live trading sessions scheduled where you can learn to use these and see them in real time. All right, so anyway, that's what I got. SimplerTrading.com forward slash tools. That'll take you to this page. You can dive in and check it out. And obviously, if you guys have any questions, give us a call, give us an email, and we'll help you out. All right, have a good one, and we'll see you at the next update.